it's Nicole the Math Lady, and today we're talking about dividing fractions. Now, I find that this is one of the places in the book that I find a lot of students have difficulty understanding the first part of the lesson. So I'm going to explain it to you uh, all on Nicole's way, and then we will show you how the easy part is just how to do the, the math computations. But first, we're going to talk about the thinking of what it means to divide fractions. So you might have seen something like this. My example says, how many one-thirds are in five? Sometimes a lot of students see that and they're like, what? Like, I don't know what that means. Let me break it down for you. Before thinking about how many one-thirds in five, I want you to think about how many one-thirds are there just in one. So let's start with one. And how many one-thirds are there in one? Well, let's divide this into thirds. And here's a third. Here's a third, and here's a third. So how many one-thirds are there? Well, the answer to that is three. Good. Now, they don't want to know how many one-thirds are in one. They want to know how many one-thirds are in five. So here's my first, here's my second, my third, my fourth, and I barely left enough room for my fifth. Okay, I know they're not really circles, but just stay with me. Okay, if there are three one-thirds in one, how many are in five? We would just say our answer is three times five, and we would get 15. So there are 15 one-thirds in five. Let me give you another example. How many one-sevenths are in four? Well, first it helps to think about how many one-sevenths are there in one. So let me actually go ahead and draw my four circles. We're going to just deal with one at first. Okay, how many one sevenths? Oh, I had to pick seven, huh? One. Okay, I don't know how perfect this is going to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> Pretend that that was equal seven parts. So how many one sevenths are there in one? Oh, there's seven. Do you notice that seven is the reciprocal to one seventh. So if I say, how many one eighths are there in one? You'd say eight. How many one tenths are there in one? You'd say 10. How many one twenty fourths are there in one? You'd say 24. So the answer to that first part is the reciprocal. That's how we can use the reciprocal. Okay, now, how many one sevenths are there in four? If there's seven in one, we multiply this times four and we get 28. So the good news is, is we can use a reciprocal, right? Seven is the reciprocal to one seventh, and we can use multiplication instead of division when dividing fractions. Take a look at the next example and it'll all come together. If I said four divided by one half, it's the same thing as saying, how many one halves are there in four? And we learned that we could use the reciprocal and multiplication. So we could take our four and change our division sign to a multiplication sign and multiply by the reciprocal. And we would get eight. Now think about it. When we had the one half, we knew there were two one halves in one. So in four, it would be four times two, and we would get eight. Ah, now it's coming together. Let's give you another example. Six divided by one-fifth. It's the same thing as saying, how many one-fifths are there in six? Well, we know there's five one-fifths in one circle, so there's 30 in six circles, right? So we know this answer is going to be 30. We just thought it through. But now let's try it with just math. Six, we can take our division sign, turn it into a multiplication sign, as long as we turn our one-fifth onto its reciprocal, which is six times five, and we still get 30. So that's the easy part. The thinking through it, I think, is the hard part. The easy part is whenever you see a division and a fraction, change your division and multiplication, change your fraction to its reciprocal. Let's try a few more problems, and then I'll send you off to your practice problems. Let's take a look at these two problems. Seven divided by one-fifth. So let's think it through. 
in one, we know there's five one-fifths. In seven of them, it's going to be seven times five. It's going to be 35. That's the way to think through the problem. Now, let's do the math. Seven times the reciprocal, which is five, and I still get 35. Stick to the math version, much easier. It also works when there's a fraction over here. So we're going to do, just do the math, two sevenths multiplied by five. M multiply your numerators, five times two is 10. Then we have seven on the bottom, which gives us one and three sevenths as an answer. So as long as you can do the math, you can change your division sign to a multiplication, change your fraction to its reciprocal. You are golden. Okay, I hope that clarifies what I think is a bit of a challenging lesson. Make sure you do the practice problem so you can do it for yourself and see that you've got it. All right, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.